My name is Phil Wilson, and I am the president and CEO of the Black AIDS Institute. HIV is, has actually always been personal for me. You know, uh, really, really early on, um, I was on a, soft a softball team in Chicago. I'm originally from Chicago. And um, one of our members, you know, didn't show up for practice one day. And then he didn't show up for the game. Um, and then literally, in a matter of weeks, he was dead. And that was like the first wake-up call. Shortly after that, I moved to Los Angeles, and by this time, it was 1982. And by then, you know, there was this talk about, about AIDS and uh, about what to do about it, and the government wasn't doing any, anything about it, and uh, I participated as one of the organizers of the first candlelight vigil uh, in Los Angeles um, because you know, by then people were really dying and nobody was doing anything. And um, we thought, well, we've got to sound the alarm. If nothing else, we've got to sound the alarm in our communities. We suspected very strongly by then that it was related to sexual activity. You know, um, and, um, and so we started to organize. And from that point on, I knew that I had to be involved in some way. For, for black gay and lesbian people, you know, we need our communities to protect us against the bias of racism. Where do I go when I'm called a nigger? I go to my church. I go to my mama and my papa. Now, that's where I go. Now, but when I'm called a faggot, I don't got anywhere else to go. And particularly if the people who are calling me a faggot you now is my mom and my daddy and my church. And so I'm willing to sacrifice everything, including my life, rather than, than risk that sanctuary. And so the experience of homophobia is more intense you now. Because at the end of the day, when you are a white gay man, you're still a white man. And all the privileges that go with being a white man, you know, are delivered onto you. When I am a black gay man, at the end of the day, I still have to be a black man in America. I actually don't talk a lot publicly about living with HIV. For one reason is that I've been unbelievably blessed. You know, uh, I mean, just really unbelievably blessed. You know, I've always had the love and support of family and friends. You know, my family's been there every step of the way, and I think that that has kept me healthy. Uh, I have been an activist, so I've had, you know, I've had knowledge about HIV, you know, and so I've always taken complete control of my disease. You know, I tell people all the time that my life is not a democracy. You know, my life is a dictatorship, you know, and I'm the dictator. You know, uh, and that has helped a lot. Um, I have been, I've had access to the best medicine, cutting edge medicine, uh, I think that's been helpful. Um, so I, I, I don't think that, that, that my experience is symptomatic to everyone's experience, but having said that, you know, um, the fact that you know, I've almost died twice you know, is not a small thing, um, because even when you have all of the advantages, you know, you can still die from this disease, you know. Um, the fact that now every single day, even though the regimens are easier and simpler, you know, I have to remember you know, every single day to take my meds, you know, because HIV is not forgiving at all. Living with HIV is a challenge, um, but um, I don't really experience it as a burden. I experience it more as a fact. Um, and um, it's just, you know, it, it's, it's the thing that is, is my life, you know. Uh, and um, I'm glad that I have purpose and focus. You know, um, I think that's really important. I think there are a lot of folks who go through their entire lives without purpose and or focus, and I'm grateful for that. I'm glad that um, I get to try 
every single day to make the world a better place. You know, um, and um, there are lots of days when obviously you don't succeed, uh, but there's something magical about getting up in the morning and saying, and I do this every single morning, getting up in the morning and saying, I get to try today to make the world a better place. And um, I'm not one of those silver linings of HIV kind of guys, um, but um, and maybe I would have found that some other way. Um, there's lots of caveats before I say what I'm going to say. Uh, and, uh, and I would give it all away, give it all up, if we didn't have HIV. Okay. But we have HIV. Um, and, um, and I'm grateful that I get to get up every morning and say, I get to try to make the world a better place today. <laughs> I, um, I think I would want people to remember that um, I never gave up. I mean, I think that that's, that's kind of the thing that I'm most, you know, everyone has their triggers. That's the thing that I'm, I'm most fearful of, you know, um, that we'll give up. And, um, and um, if anything, I want people to say, you never gave up. 